We are alive. It's nice to be alive. But why are we alive? The life outside and around us and inside us is actually under constant threat, constant challenge. Oxygen, food, basic biochemistry, that's damaging the life all the time. But we have fantastic methods of defense and maintenance and repair, which give us the ability to live. And that's what we talked last time. That ability is the ability of homeodynamics. And our survival ability can also be measured in terms of what we call homeodynamic space. Two people will have different levels of homeodynamic space. And that is what determines who is less healthy or more healthy. But what is this homeodynamic space? Basically, it's the survival ability. And it has three main characteristics. One is stress response. How our body responds to any disturbance, either from outside or inside. Yeah? From outside, when I go into the sunlight, it creates some kind of damage there. The temperature will create some kind of challenge for the body. So if my body is able to understand this stress coming from outside and something similar happening inside the body and tries to match the challenge or the damage, then you can live. Stress response is very, very central to survival. How we are able to respond, react, adopt and adapt to that stress. How can we tolerate? What is our limits of tolerance? That will measure my robustness. How much stress of any kind not, I'm not talking here only mental stress. First, we are talking biological stress. Stress from oxygen, stress from temperature, stress from infections, stress from food, too much food, stress from too little food. All these stresses. How much I can tolerate will determine my robustness when I collapse. But the important part is resilience. How much I can tolerate and get damaged if I get some infection, flu, it will damage me, but can I come out of it? That is my resilience. And these are the two things, robustness and resilience, which determine whether we have healthy life or unhealthy life. So stress response is one of the most central components of homeodynamic space. And we will be talking about that later on, how we use this component of stress response and our healthy life. We'll come to that a bit later. The second part of the homeodynamic space is damage control. Actually, it deals together with stress response also. That, but damage control is also happening without stress response pathway in the cell. That when DNA is getting damaged, DNA repair systems are taking care of them. When proteins are getting damaged, our uh, debris clearing system like lysosomes and proteasomes, they take care of that. When there are a lot of uh, uh, free radicals and oxidants, then antioxidants are taking care of that. They are not just stress responses, they are also general maintenance. That's why we call it damage control. A lot of damage can be tolerated by the body. And that is what determines also how much damage can be allowed to stay before it gives any problem. Yeah? That damage becomes problematic later in life, in old age. Young people can tolerate their robustness is much more, their resilience is much more. For an older person, that resilience and robustness is smaller. We call homeodynamic space has shrunk. It has become lesser. On a day-to-day -day basis, an older person can survive very nicely. But one degree fall in temperature in wintertime kills many old people. One sudden psychological event in life makes you collapse. So stress response, damage control, and the third category is also linked. They're all interlinked. The third is what we call the constant remodeling. Our body is constantly changing itself to fit best with the changing conditions. Yeah, so that is where these terms come from. That first you adopt something and then you adapt to it and then you become adept to handling those kind of stuff. So homeodynamic space is our center of life. It becomes lesser with age. 
we need to find means to keep it uh, larger, whether we slow down its uh, rate of shrinkage or if we can recover it. Recovery in biology is relatively much more difficult than maintaining. You know, in Danish we call for bugelsa, prevention. And that is not preventing any specific long distant disease, but maintaining the health, preventing the loss of health. And loss of health to be measured in terms of stress response, damage control, and constant remodeling. So we will talk about that next time, how we make these three characteristics of health amenable or accessible for intervention by medicine, by lifestyle, by whatever means. There are such a range of methods to do something about it. We will talk that next time. See you then.